When I first started at Leon Schlesinger's in 1936, I realized very soon that not only were the guys doing funny gags in the cartoons, they were funny in real life too. They were always playing tricks on each other. Uh, Tex Avery, uh, our director, was the funny one, was the biggest prankster of all. And one, we had an old Coke machine in the recreation room that held bottles in water. There was a clamp around the neck of the bottle and when you put a nickel in, the clamp would open and you could take your Coke. Well, he opened the cap, Coke machine. He took a bottle cap remover, removed all the Coke with a straw. He drank the whole thing and then he poured whiskey, bourbon whiskey into the Coke, put the a bottle cap back on, closed the machine. It was a very hot day and the first person who came along to get a Coke on our break was Gil Turner. He put his nickel in, took the uh, bottle and, and removed the cap from on the machine and he drank that Coke all in one gulp and then it just he realized it was burning his throat and of course everybody just laughed just roared. It was terrible the things they did to each other. Another thing they did to a new in-betweener there were it was such a dilapidated place there was mostly a lot, lot of knot holes in, in the floors and on the second floor uh, they if they would remove uh, the knot hole and then they would put a drop of water in a medicine dropper right above the desk of some poor unsuspecting in-betweener and drop water on his drawing and he couldn't understand it. He'd look up by this time they'd cover it and he would just be bewildered and they would do this to him two three times in the next 15-20 minutes and the poor guy was just crazy. He just couldn't figure out what to do. Another thing they did to the poor in-betweeners is if an in-betweener had a problem he might go to um, uh, the fellow who hands out the work and knows a lot of answers to the questions and the, the fellow would tell him, you know for this problem I think you need an in-between machine. And he'd say, an in-between machine? Where am I going to get that? He said, well Art Goble up in the ink and paint had it, the last, so why don't you go uh, see him about it? So the in-betweener would come up and ask Art Goble, do you have the in-between machine? And he says, yes I do. And he would hand him an ink board with pegs and he would put some kind of a gadget on whatever he had on his desk. The fellow would look at it. He says, well, what do I do with this? He says, go see Art Loomer in the back de background department. He'll, he'll give you something that'll help you with this in-between machine. So the unsuspecting in-betweener would go to Art Loomer. Art Loomer would give him something. More or less, the kids ca caught on uh, in a, in a, with, within a couple of times of this. But there was one fellow, Herbie Cornfield, who went all through the studio being sent from one place to another and had all these crazy gizmos and gadgets on that ink board and acted like he didn't know what to do with it. And everybody, of course, knew and laughed. They stopped that practice around World War II. They stopped that. But they did all they did the funniest things. I have to tell you about a serious thing that happened. This wasn't a prank. But one of our inkers who sat in the right in the extreme left corner of the of the ink uh, department uh, went out to have a cigarette and she forgot to turn off her goose neck lamp. And as you know, we used nitrate cells in those days and they were very flammable. Well, first thing we know, somebody was yelling fire. 
her desk start smoking and there were some flames. Uh, uh, our um, head of department, who was Frank Powers at the time, ran for the fire distinguisher. But of all the dumb things, the fire distinguisher was behind the cabinet that we kept our paint in. And it was a heavy cabinet with lots of paint jars and it was, oh, about almost six feet tall and, and, uh, and about three foot wide. Well, I was sitting there and saw this, and I don't know where I got this superhuman strength, but I ran and I pulled the cabinet toward me so that he could grab the fire distinguisher, and immediately he was able to put up the fire. And everybody said, if it hadn't been for Martha's super strength, the whole place would have gone up in flames. All we had to do is pick up the jars of paint that fell out of the uh, cabinet and none of them broke or anything like that because the lids were on pretty tight. Can you tell another funny story about Tam and his car? Oh, that was um, uh, Teehee. Teehee. His name was Teehee. His name was really Thornton He, but everybody called him Teehee. He was our caricature designer. He was an animator. And this is 1936. And he drove a little Triumph. In those days, everybody had big old cars. He was able to find a parking space right in front all the time. Well, one day the fellows thought they would have some fun with him. And four of them lifted up his car, brought it through the double doors of our studio, and put it in one of the animation rooms and then waited for him to go out at noon. He always put on a little tam over his bald head and he went to pick up his girlfriend. He went outside, all the guys were standing around talking because they were all in on the gag and he's looking for his car and he can't find it and he's looking up the street and he's looking down the street and he's sure somebody stole his car and he's just about to call the police when they said, come on in, Teehee, we'll show you where your car is. And they took him in the animation room where his car was, and they lifted it out, lifted it up and, and carried it out, and put it in the curb where it was, and he drove away with it. <laughs> I'm telling you, that was... There was always something going on, always something going on.